Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. Today, we are going to analyze the 4K Blu-ray of Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, which is playing in the background as you can see from the camera. Now, let's first start by putting the disc into a Panasonic UB9000 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray player and read the static HDR10 metadata. As you can hopefully see from the screen, the maximum mastering display luminance is 4000 nits, which suggests that this movie was graded on a Dolby Pulsar monitor. And as is increasingly common on Star Wars movies on 4K Blu-rays, there are no max CRL or max FARL metadata, they are both zeroed out, so we will need to depend on other means to analyze the actual peak brightness in the movie itself. So I will be using the Canon DPV3120 reference broadcast monitor, which features an excellent inbuilt HDR analysis tool to assess the peak brightness and also the white color gamut used in this movie. But based on my experience of my previous HDR analysis videos uploaded to YouTube, YouTube's inbuilt copyright detection system is really quite stringent and my videos were flagged faster than an email from a Nigerian prince. So for this video, I think I'm going to try something new. So we are going to use the false color tool on the Canon DPV3120, which will paint different elements on screen in different colors. So anything that is below 200 nits will be classified as SDR and it will be monochrome. And then you can see on the left of the screen, there is a chart that tells you what color will correspond to what sort of peak brightness in the actual content itself. So let's start off with the beginning and in the opening scene, you can see here that when the spaceship is actually traveling across the ocean, the sun and also the reflections of the wave hit or even exceeded 1000 nits, which is a very good start, almost as good as the opening scene from The Dark Knight. So if any of you have had TVs calibrated by myself, I usually like to use the opening scene of The Dark Knight to assess various attributes of picture quality and it so happens that that scene is one of the best opening sequences in the history of movie as well. So I'm not entirely sure what is your favorite opening scene from any movie, so just you know, let us know in the YouTube comment section below. But it is an extremely good start in terms of the peak brightness and the HDR presentation on the part of row one. And next we go into the sequence where a very young Jean is running into her home to warn her parents. And here you can see that various lights in the house is lit in a very impressive, very impactful brightness, exceeding 1000 nits and even occasionally reaching 1200 nits, 1400 nits. And Next, we go to another scene where I specifically wanted to check how bright the sun gets. And as the spacecraft flew past, you can see that the sun here exceeded 1000 nits. And then in the next sequence, we can see in the city of Jeddah, the reflections of the buildings and also the spacecrafts exceeded. 1000 is quite easily giving that sort of sparkle, that sort of pristine three-dimensional depth and pop to the entire presentation. And then we go into the next scene where Death Star is in action. So when the Death Star laser is being fired and the explosions ensued, we can again see it easily exceeding 1000 nits. And then in the final sequence where these characters are waiting for the expanding explosion to reach them again from a uh, Death Star firing. I mean, I'm really quite sad that, you know, they had to die, but, you know, it's not really a happy ending. I'm sorry if I spoil it for you. I hope, you know, I put a big ass spoiler, spoiler in the title, but I, I was quite engrossed with the movie by this stage, so I was really quite taken aback that they had to all 
die in the end. But you can see that the expanding explosion reach about 1200 nits again full screen so it looked extremely impressive on the Canon DPV 3120 which is capable of 2000 nits full screen and probably less so on most OLEDs because most OLEDs you generally have a uh, full screen brightness that is capped to around 150 nits because of ABL or automatic brightness limiter and then last but not least, I wanted to check the Darth Vader scene, which is really, again, one of the best scenes in the movie. And the uh, sparks and also the gunshots and also his lightsaber all reached above 1000 nits and even hitting 1400 nits, which gives that sort of impact that HDR is renowned for. After checking these peak brightness, elements we go on to check the white color garment use so at the start the rogue one title characters i placed the color checker cursor on the yellow bit and it exceeded rec 709 as you can see from the cie diagram and then in various parts of the movie, I checked various lights here and there and some red lights and green lights, they exceeded Rec. 709 according to the DPV 3120's color checker function. As you can see from the CIE chromaticity diagram. And then I placed the cursor over the explosion caused by the Death Star as seen from space over the city of Jeddah and when I place the cursor around the explosion there are various elements that exceeded Rec. 709. So overall I think this is arguably the best Star Wars movie I've seen in terms of HDR presentation. It really is quite something, it's quite impressive and it probably deserves to go into your collection if you enjoy a true HDR presentation. If you'd like to find out some other movies with true HDR presentation, I've created a playlist here. And if you would like to check out some movies which are not really HDR or have subdued HDR, then I've put another playlist here. And I'll see you in the next video.